So, hi, welcome everyone. Uh, today we're going to be talking with our friends from Campbell University to discuss their sensational award-winning project, utilizing accreditation to demonstrate compliance with CRAC guidelines. So what is a sensational award? Sensational awards were established in 2015 um, as an annual award to recognize the outstanding efforts by SAN member institutions and organizations in developing high quality comprehensive solutions to challenging state authorization issues. The uh, creativity and vision that the institutions have shown are certainly helping us to uh, address these issues as they understand the problem and they conceptualize tools or procedures to address the problem and then mobilize their campus communications and their communities to buy in and collaborate on procedures which support compliance with state and federal rules intended to best support educational opportunities for students. We're very excited to award Campbell University located in North Carolina for their 2022 Sensational Award in the category of Compliance Innovations. As was previously noted, this category calls on SAN members to share institutional policies, tools, and, in, and inventive or novel compliance management practices to help solve tricky compliance issues. The staff joining us today from, from Campbell University will share the award-winning project that fosters collaboration in the development of a crosswalk to identify standards for accreditation and the aspects of the CRAC guidelines for participation in reciprocity through the State Authorization Reciprocity Agreements, or SARA. In addition to an institution's responsibility to meet accreditor standards, institutions must attest that their institution meets and they agree to comply with the CRAC guidelines. And uh, the CRAC guidelines, for those who are not familiar, are a set of criteria to evaluate distance education practices at the institution. To achieve this, Campbell University developed a plan to manage this challenging responsibility to identify processes and demonstrate compliance in, is, it was critical to ensure efficient compliance practices and eliminate duplicity with these requirements that have common elements. I'm very pleased to introduce Bill Hall, Director of Institutional Research and State Authorization, and Ellen Dobson, Director of University Assessment Office of Institutional Effectiveness and Accreditation Specialist to share about their plan to utilize common review and processes, which provides a cost-effective, seamless, and adaptable tool, which could be utilized year to year and by peer institutions nationally. So right now I'm gonna turn over this presentation to our friends at Campbell University. Hello. Uh, if you give me two seconds to share my screen, um, there we go. Move that. Um, sorry, I'm uh, getting uh, things set up here. Okay, uh, so uh, I'm uh, Dr. Bill Hall, uh, Director of Institutional Research and State Authorization. And Ellen, please introduce yourself. Ellen Dobson, I'm the Director of University Assessment, and Bill and I are both located in the Office of Institutional Effectiveness at Campbell University. Um, so uh, what is Campbell? Where are we? So Campbell, we're a private, not-for-profit four-year university located in Bowie's Creek, North Carolina. Where is Bowie's Creek? I kind of doubt any of you have heard of that. Uh, if you have, congratulations. Uh, but Bowie's Creek is a... Uh, a uh, uh, small town, if you will, uh, located about 35 miles due south of Raleigh, North Carolina, which is the state capital for North Carolina. Um, our Bowie's Creek House is our main campus, uh, but we also have additional off-site instructional locations in Raleigh, the capital city, at Fort Bragg, Pope Army Air Force Base, Camp Lejeune, and we also have online. Uh, what is our scope? We offer associates and bachelor's programs. And then at the graduate level, we have graduate and professional programs, including 28 program, uh, yeah, including 28 programs leading to professional licensure. Um, among our um, professional licensure programs at the undergraduate level, we have a wide variety of K through 12 ed. And at the graduate level, uh, Campbell boasts a doctor of osteopathic medical school, 
a law school, PharmD, physical assistant, and uh, doctor of physical therapy, among others. Um, we have also a wide variety of distance ed activity, which varies by academic program and level. As I mentioned, we have an online presence and we enroll students all across the United States, um, but also our medical students, so the DO students and PA, PharmD, and DPT, they send students out of state on um, clinical rotations. So we have um, online distance ed activity and on the ground distance act ed, ed activity. So this is just a brief look at the process that we recently went through. Oh, it seems like only yesterday. <laughs> we uh, were awarded our reaffirmation last year in December, um, but I'm sure that you have a similar process regardless of what your accrediting agency is. So, so um, how did this project come about? So, um, Back in summer of 2021, I attended a NC Sarah virtual conference, and there was a recommendation to develop CRAC guidelines evidence folder um, at that time. And so I brought that back to an institutional effectiveness office team meeting. We, we meet regularly, we started doing that during the pandemic, and we've continued um, that process. Um, and following uh, the guidelines or the guidance from that virtual conference, I said, "Hey, there's this thing we need to be doing." And you know, uh, uh, you know, we were saying that um, we were meeting the uh, CRAC guidelines, but the concern was to have a firm, documented evidence folder. Um, so I highlighted this need. Um, and started bouncing ideas around uh, in the staff meeting that morning. Um, and Ellen uh, came up with the idea that said, hey, some of these guidelines that are the CRAC guidelines sound very similar to what we just went through with our SAC COC decennial reaffirmation. Um, and so putting our heads together, we started looking at things and said, hey, you know, there is actually a direct correlation uh, between what's required by the CRAC guidelines and uh, what was required for SAC COC reaffirmation purposes. Um, so uh, going with that, uh, Ellen and I put our heads together and started to, to develop a crosswalk between the CRAC guidelines and SAC COC requirements. Ellen, did I miss anything? I think you got it. Okay. So um, this is the process that we used in the development of our crosswalk. First, we got our tools ready. We set up an Excel workbook, and then we um, designated each sheet with one of the guidelines. Go ahead, Bill. So this basically is how that looks. This is the first page of the workbook. We have the CRAC guideline at the top, and then all of the subcomponents listed in the cells going down underneath. Notice that there are two type, two headings at the top. We're looking for the CC narrative, our compliance narrative, and other evidence. So our intent was to map up what we already had and then what other evidence we might need in order to fully comply with the guideline. So that was when the work began. We started looking at the SAC standards and I had been deeply embedded in that uh, reaffirmation process. So I looked to what we had already done and looked for anywhere where we might need to go somewhere else for evidence. And we came up with something that looked like this. For this particular guideline, you notice that we have the compliance certification identification of item 10.6. And then the highlighted areas represent other evidence that we felt would demonstrate our compliance in those particular areas. Okay. So after we had identified the crosswalk, we created a folder on our share drive, created subfolders for each guideline, and then simply quickly, we were able to copy and collect evidence and put it into the corresponding folders. So now we have something that looks like this. Here are our folders for each of the guidelines. 
some general information that Bill and I used in cooperating in creating this process. And now we can fully demonstrate what we have as evidence of compliance with the guidelines. And this is just digging into one of those um, particular guidelines. This is the CRAC 4. And there are four pieces from our compliance certification and then our academic calendar we are also introducing as evidence for this particular one. Then we needed to fill in the blanks. So there were a few places where we did not have a direct link between what we had done for reaffirmation and what we needed to do for CRAC. So that's when we consulted with other entities on campus. We explained to them what we were doing. We uh, shared the guideline and the subcomponent with them and asked them what evidence they had that we could include in this inventory. In this particular example, we're looking at what we call a COSU, which is our Campbell Online Student. No, that's not right. I can't remember now, Bill. Anyway, it's a first year seminar it's for our online year students. Seminar. <laughs> that's easy enough. Um, and they have a, a student a student success um, module in their syllabus. So they identified to us that that would respond or could be used for evidence of that particular standard. So we added those things as needed. So, um, yeah, that was quick run through of uh, how we pieced together everything. Um, the the organization of this so it was kind of fortuitous that we had just gone through our sax decennial um and that a lot of that information was fresh on ellen's mind um uh given you know given her role as a director of university assessment um and so you know, the easy part was putting together the crosswalk between the crac standards and then the SAC COC guidelines. And then filling in the holes, that took in a little bit uh, more uh, thinking and, and brainstorming. Um, but there really but, weren't that many holes. We got yeah. most of it done. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we're hoping that, so if you're a SAC COC school, hopefully you can take our work and you know apply it directly. If you're not a SAC COC uh, regional accreditor um, or school accredited by SAC COC, hopefully you'll be able to find a similar process. Um, so that was kind of the technical side, but what really facilitated our being able to do this is that Ellen and I, we're organized in the same office. So we're both in the institutional effectiveness office. Um, personally, me having gone to various state authorization workshops and you know virtual conferences and, and other activities, um, sometimes, you know, state authorization folks at different schools are, might be siloed and you have to know to reach out to your institutional research office or your institutional effectiveness office. The bigger the school, the, the IR and the IE side, they may be kind of housed in the same general area, but they might be different offices with different personnel heading up each branch. Um, but yeah, so Campbell, given our size, even though we have a fairly large scope, given our size, so like I said, Ellen and I, we are organized in the same office, the IE office, and also uh, our supervisor is the associate provost to in turn report to the provost. So there's that kind of vertical organization as well that helps facilitate our knowledge base about um, the different aspects of uh, the compliance. Um, going forward, what's going to happen in the future? I think we're all waiting with bated breath about, um, will the CRAC guidelines be updated? I think, uh, from what I remember, the last thing is that that's still in process and hopefully we'll be hearing soon. Cheryl, if you, you might be able to give a better update to that. Um, and then, uh, what's going to happen early in 2023? on the federal side, um, because hopefully, as everyone is aware, um, the propo negotiated proposed rulemaking regarding state authorization, um, that 
comments, direct comments about that got delayed until early in the coming year. Um, um, it might be a little obvious that we're recycling these slides because we have a questions component here. Um, perhaps uh, our mascots, Gaylord and Gladys, the camels, go camels. Uh, <laughs> okay, you can ask some questions on our behalf. But um, yeah, in a nutshell, that's what we did. Um, and and yeah, like like the slide says, with the pre-existing compliance document, demonstrating compliance isn't a stretch. Um, so hopefully uh, you all will find this useful. Um, if you're in a situation different from Bill and I, where maybe you don't know who that accreditation person is, our suggestion and really our big takeaway here is reach out first, don't rebuild, check your resources on campus and see if somebody has already done this work and that will make short work of demonstrating your compliance. Yeah, and um, perhaps on a personal note, um, so, you know, the as Cheryl mentioned, the Sensational Awards have been going on since 2015. Uh, I started in my role in 2017 in state authorization, never thinking I would be an award winner. And here, just, you know, a few short years later, um, you know, uh, with the help of a colleague at school, you know, we're getting represented and, and I've won an award, a national award. So there you go. Well, I think that's wonderful. Congratulations to Campbell University. And I think that, you know, your comments about, you um, being able to collaborate across the campus. I think Ellen, that was the, that big takeaway at the end that you just shared about how there could be other people at camp, on your campuses that are doing some similar work. And, you know, as Bill's heard us say many, many times, you know, we have to talk with key stakeholders at our institution so that we're not duplicative, you know, with our work. And so, um, you know, you all being able to acknowledge that this is something the CRAC guidelines, you know, have a place where you can coordinate with your um, accreditor work makes a lot of sense. And I do think we will see something on the horizon, what exactly that will look like um, to replace the CRAC guidelines, as we know, or, or you know, getting older. But uh, something that Bill was mentioning too, is that um, we've talked with many SAN members and we're finding that they do bake this um, affirming of their CRAC guidelines in with their accreditation work. So there are many that, you know, acknowledge that this is something that, you know, really does merge in with uh, what they're with the uh, accreditation work at their institution. So um, so this is very smart that you've created an actual functional structure um, to be able to make that work. I think that's brilliant. So thank you very much for sharing that and sharing your process and your thought um, thought plan, you know, and able to um, implement this at your campus. So final words. Any final words? Um, just thank you for recognizing our work. Yes, thank it was, you. Uh, terrific, yeah. Well, and we're, for those of you doing this work, if you have questions, you can you can contact us at Campbell. We're happy to share our experiences with you. And and we appreciate collegial members as yourself. Um, you know that's what SAN's all about is you know being able to share amongst our network. So thank you for being for embodying that. So well done. <laughs>